Hi, this is Julia Whittup with the Shamanic Arts Center. And today we're talking to Wayne Sneelgrove, who uh, is a elder native from Canada, one of the First Nations. And I don't know how to pronounce your tribe name. Wayne, could you tell us how to pronounce your tribe name? Soto. Soto. Okay, it's French, so it has uh, all those extra, <laughs> extra letters Soto, yeah. in it. <laughs> well, tell us how you um, got into the <laughs> business. <laughs> and kind of um, what the kind of the like the red robe kind of thing is that kind of well, yeah, that and kind of mountain. I was I really enjoying your your uh, sessions on Facebook. How did you get? into that too okay how to well you know um well first of all let me introduce myself to everybody out there my name is wayne william snowgrove so the tribe fishing lake first nation uh nakaway people uh treaty four territory uh for those of uh for those of you who uh wondered and uh, the reason why i say that is because every region has has their own kind of treaty and so is to remind us that we are we are our own uh independent nations and so that's that's part of the reason why i say that first of all thank you so much for having me on uh, it, it's really a, 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 a an honor to 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 be here and, and and to sit with you and and uh to kind of share a little bit about what I, i'm going to share about you know um uh what I've been doing, you know, what I do is uh, I, I uh, um, walk the red road, you know, it, it, it's our indigenous spiritual path. Uh, and uh, I, I'm very, very honored that I, I've been able to sit with so many beautiful, wonderful and powerful elders, both male and female grandmothers and, you know, grandfathers. And, uh, you know, that one big grandfather that's really, uh, been central in my life and it's really helped guide me to where where I am today is uh, grandfather Tony Stonehawk he's uh, Nanticoke out of Delaware and uh, uh, so he's the one that really kind of brought me out uh, to to uh, to to a good way to, you know a, a, a good way to live because the way I started in life was really uh, was really difficult, you know, in foster care and, and uh, uh, like orphanages. I, I was stolen, stolen at birth from my uh, from my mom, uh, tribe, family heritage, and all that, and, and was raised. Uh, began my life again in a communal, you know, unloved, <laughs> unloved, unwanted, you know, care, which is like like, uh, you know, the orphanage, and, and it was uh, really a uh, uh, designed to be a policy of assimilation by the uh, Canadian, the, the white colonial Canadian government uh, to really destroy, you know, the, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the red nation, you know, not just the Sotos, they, they, they did it with, with you know, every, every tribe was considered, you know, the enemy and still kind of is, you know. And so, uh, so uh, yeah, I've been uh, kind of, uh, that's, that's kind of where I started and uh, needed some kind of, uh, some kind of spiritual path to really help, you know, save my life, you know, yeah. I tried Buddhism. Nam yo renge ho, yeah, nam yo renge ho. I did that for for years, and uh, did the boarding and Christian thing, and that really didn't work. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, and uh, you know, part of that was uh, also going to uh, sweat lodge ceremony. I didn't realize uh, that when I went to that first ceremony, it was going to lead me to where we are today right here and you know there was no intention of you know you know me writing books or me doing the facebook live or anything like that that was just kind of like you know um you know the road roads really about being guided you know guy you know listening and being guided to 
to to help uh, connect um, um, to help connect everything, connect everything with everything. You know, not just the two legged, but uh, you know uh, those that uh, uh, to restore. You know, to restore that those the sacred ancient agreements again, we, which is really a lot bigger than just the two legged. You know, it, 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 it it's about so much more. You know, right. So, so that that was a long answer, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I like those long answers. Sounds like the sweat lodge is a gateway to love. <laughs> that was like the uh, yeah. Sweat Lodge sounds like it's a gateway yeah. for a lot of people yeah, on the Red Road. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I think it is. You know, that's just part of my medicine bundle. Go ahead. Do you conduct sweat lodges at all? I do. That's part of my medicine bundle that uh, Grandfather Tony. Okay, that's uh, what you meant really, by that. Again, really very honored to. to yeah, to to you know serve the people, you know, and, and that's 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 the medicine that was passed down to him, and that's the medicine part of the medicine bundle, you know, that I carry. I also uh, carry a pipe for the people, so uh, you know the, that comes with a lot of. So. Well, I'll so have I to talk to you too. later so about you know, doing the a version of the. I'm hoping you can do some ceremonies at the the shaman's camp this summer. Uh -huh. Sure, be very, very honored. Absolutely, yes. Very, very, very honored. I, I, uh, you know, part of this journey, yeah, part, part of this journey is, uh, you know, again, when I first started, you know, the Red Road, you know, because of my childhood and past, it was really, really just uh, violent and really sad, and you know, a lot of, you know. A lot of suicide attempts before the age of, you know, 10, you know, kind of thing before what? any drug hit my system, you know, so, uh, yeah, it, it was just, you know, it just, that's just, that's just the way it was, you know, I, I, it wasn't, you know, no one told me that I was stolen at birth, you know, no one's told me that. So, you know, uh, you know, young people, they come up with their own like their own uh, ideas. And really my idea was uh, solutions. And my solution was uh, they weren't the problem, I'm the problem. You know, kind of you know, you know I, I won't love you. I won't love you less, I'll love me less kind of thing. And, and then, you know, um, you know, just, you know, I wasn't born perfect and, you know, I have a cleft palate. I, spoke with a stutter, I had learning disabilities, you know, all these things we know now clinically point to, hey, something serious going on, but this is the 70s, man, so, you know, so nobody knew nothing back then, it was just, you know, yeah. this poor white family, this snow group just wanted to love up on th this kid and, and me, and, you know, I didn't distinguish, you know, I, I, I never, at, at that point, I, I never had a family before. So I really didn't know what that was, you know, I didn't know I was part of a family. I, I, I just thought that, you know, at that time in my life, I really had just, it was really another place that I, I had to survive, you know, you know, it was just saying, it was, well, but it was weird because this was the smallest house I think I've ever been in as far as numbers. It was just me and one other kid, you know, turned out to be my brother <laughs> but it was, was. Just like, yeah, I'm like, yeah i'm looking at him like i'm like what you, you know? didn't know it was your brother yeah so it was just me 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 and the real no just some other kid well i did well they said it was my brother but i never had one i mean you know like <laughs> like i had no reference to what a brother was you, you know like i i would go to school and people would talk about moms and dad and i'd be like oh man i wonder what they're talking about you know Kind of like, you know, I had no idea that when I was going home, I was going home to like a family. I'd always kind of thought that uh, um, that they would get tired of me or, or, you know, just kind of send me away. So I would spend hours just kind of uh, looking out the window, waiting to be picked up again and just kind of oh, no. you know, go on to the next house or next orphanage or next family, you know, next, next you know, foster care kind of thing. And so that's just... That's just the way it was. I didn't really know it was my family until I sat down with my mom at like 12, 
you know, like I was adopted at like three, you know, another, you know, 12, you know, 12 years old. I'm like, mom, you know, just like my, I just like, I, I like, are you the mom that they're talking about in school? You know, I think that's how I posted, you know, <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, will you ever like send me away? kind of thing is this like my home kind of thing because I, I didn't understand I didn't understand that you know and so you know I, wow. I didn't understand the concept of, of, of a family I I definitely under, I definitely understood the concept of, of not being white at that point you know middle 70s you, you know you have to be white white is right you know you know yeah white is right you know yeah. so I, I spent a lot of years trying to like like Aww. wash off cut my hair short and uh speak, speak, speak the king's english really well and and, and just kind of like act as white as i could so like nobody would nobody would, would know this that i wasn't white i could never pull it off though you know it's funny no. now kind of like really sad then but it was kind of like you no know, just kind of like uh you know and you know one of those changes you know that really kind of brought me out was um was was swimming too swimming was uh i i i mean i was a really really good athlete you know, like i was bigger strong i i i i was really a good athlete you know i, I mean i could run throw a by and i would just uh you know plus i had a lot of attitude to boot so uh you know, <laughs> so you found a place you excelled how did you, boots, you know? first get to a sweat lodge how did that happen How did I get to her swell? Well, uh, okay, so I, I, I'm, I, I've been in probably two or three rehabs at this point before the age of, you know, I don't know, very young age, you know, and uh, uh, wandered in. So I, I was introduced to this thing called recovery, and I didn't really understand what that was. And I kind of wandered into uh, a local meet. I moved down to South Florida at this time to, again, jumpstart my my swimming career and I said you know what I, I really should you know go, go to a, a meeting of you know recovery and so that's what I did and uh, then I went to a meeting at recovery on the Seminole Reservation out in Hollywood Florida and uh, that's where I met my my elder uh, grandfather Tony Stonehawk and that's how that's how that started and I was in my early 20s you know I was really really maybe 21, 20, yeah, so I, I was in my early 20s, and just raging, just absolutely right, and so uh, that's just really, I kind of asked Tony this, uh, like, a long time ago about, you know, when did my journey with the Red Bird really start, and really the technical, you know, the really deep, you know, spiritual answer would be, you know, when you're born, Yeah. <laughs> you know, the more practical <laughs> kind of thing is you know when you know when 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 did my red road start really in earnest with really uh like you said your question yeah uh, on my first sweat line you know you know and and i i just fell in love with it right away you know and i had no intention at that point of um doing anything with it i just wanted to be it was the first time that really anybody asked me to be a part of anything you know nobody you know everybody was asking me to leave at that point because i was so you angry. Know, I, I was so literally out of my mind kind of thing you know? angry upset drinking you know swimming fighting you know like you know all this stuff you know all this all this unhealed stuff you know all this mm -hmm. stuff that this is what it looked like on the outside but on the inside it looked like you know being stolen all sorts of abuse you can imagine what kind of abuse i went through you know you know in the orphanages foster care so it was like all that you know yeah and, you know suicide attempts and so, so it started really early and so it was really grandfather tony was the first kind of thing to say okay well let's 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 sit together and i didn't understand that you know like you know there's a certain language we use in, in in the red road talk and you know sitting together and it is one of the very top let's, let's just sit together you know kind of thing you know and i and i can remember not understanding what that was i i really wanted it to be something good uh something and it was healthy. uh but you know there's no 
it was, you know, but, but it took me a minute to figure that out because, <laughs> you know, again, I, I came from a really hurt place and again, I'm not healed. So again, it was kind of like, oh man, what does this guy want from me? He doesn't want anything, you know, God, you know, like, am I going to have to survive you kind of thing? Everything in my life, that's when, that's what the bottom line was. It was, am I going to have to survive you? And then, so it kind of showed up and I said, well, nobody asked me anywhere. <laughs> I'm like, well, of course I'm going to show up and uh, showed up. And, and, and it was probably one of the most beautiful experiences of my life and uh, felt felt very very honored you know to be there i mean okay let's get real for a second i lasted three stones, <laughs> I lasted three stones, <laughs> three stones. you know usually you bring in like four four three stones yeah well here's uh, you know the short story is uh you know like here's me in my first sweat lodge you know just kind of sitting there and, and i'm sitting there like well i'm going to show these white people Tough guy. <laughs> you, know, I'm tough. you know, I was a world class. Well, I, I, I mean, I was a world class athlete, you know, at that point, you know, right. I was, you know, ranked in the world national champions, tough, could, could bench press 400 pounds, could run like like six marathons in a row, could I do all this stuff. And so, of course, I could do a sweat lodge. Of course. What, what do you mean? Look at me. Man. <laughs> look, look at what I can do, you know? And, and, and you know, and, and, and then, um, and, and if people thought I was real spiritual, because you know, because they didn't say anything. I'm just, I mean, they were just like really mad dog and everybody did, you, you know, just doing the warrior look, which kind of looks like right. this. Kind of like this. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, the warrior look and everybody's like, oh my God, this guy's really, this guy really knows what is going on. But this is what really has happened through my head. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. What is going on? What is that logic? Why is, why is the fire so hot? Why is, you know, why did they, they put stones in the fire? Why, you know, so, did so it was really what was going through my mind. Like, oh my God, they're going to put in this. So, so anyway, uh, so, <coughs> so it started, they kind of brought me in, right? And I brought me in and, uh, you, know, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow, this is, you know, and, and you know, it's probably like 10 or 15 people that I couldn't remember what they were all like, you know, so it's just me and Tony that were only skins there. And so, uh, so, you know, looking around, everybody's in that like spiritual state and I'm looking around like, oh my God, what's going to happen here? You know? And then I can remember the, they, they brought the first stone in. I'm like, oh my God, that's a really hot freaking stone. Okay. All right. All right, I think I get it. You know what? I think my ears are starting to burn a little bit, though. You know, <laughs> my ears are starting to burn. That's know? one and rock, then, uh, right? <laughs> you know, then they brought the second stone in. One rock. We got like forty-seven others to go to. <laughs> 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 you, know? you know, and then the second stone came in. The second stone came in, and I was like, "Oh my!" The first stone, I thought my ears were were, were on fire. The second stone, I knew. They my were ears were on fire <laughs> and then the third still my hair was on fire you know everything was so hot it was on fire and i said grandfather tony i gotta leave i gotta leave and so we said yeah go ahead and just go you know just go sit out by the fire you know and i said uh okay and i felt really disappointed in myself i can have shame and disappointment myself but you know uh, grandfather tony pulled me aside and said that's you know that's where we all start you know, he just said, we're very kind, you know, very gentle. And he said, just, you know, just, just next time. I think he said, last four stones, you know, you're sitting there for four stones next time, you know. And, you know, I, 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 I don't really remember, but I remember it's grandfather Tony usually brings seven stones for the seven directions every, every round. And so I think he took it easy. I mean, the next time or, or next time I showed up. Uh, he just brought in four stones and I lasted, I lasted the first round and the second round, but you know, well, well, the spiritual teaching is, I, I didn't know what chased me out was, was, was selfishness and, and the ego. Look what I can do. I, I'm going to show you right. what's, what's, you know, what I can do. And, and really the thing is, uh, what, what, what keeps us in the life is, is what we can do for each other. Like how I can pray for you, and, you know, and that first lot chased me out because I, because I didn't know how to pray for you, you know, you know, I, I didn't know how to pray for others. I didn't know how many others really there were, there were 15 people in there, but really I know now there, there's millions of ancestors, thousands of ancestors in there, in there you know, 
you know, and, and I had to be aware of that and understand that and learn to pray for, pray for all those circles, you know, and I didn't understand that back then, but, you know, I really like to tell that story because it, it paints a really clear picture about where, to where my journey started, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, like, it's okay to, you know, like, it's okay to start with, you know, right where you're at, you know, you and I was at a really, really dark, dangerous, scary moment. Yeah, well, well, a lot of people don't know that. People say, you know, you have to be smart. And, you know, you have to like appear perfect, look perfect, sound perfect, you know, kind of all that. And really, that's not the deal. The deal is, you know, you know, we start where you, you know, we start where you, we start where you're at. Kind of, I will meet you where you're at. Kind of thing. You know, just saying, Grandfather Tony just said, you know what? Last four stones next time to just to, to sit with four or four grandfathers, you know, like, you know, next time. I said, okay, you know, that that's that seemed reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so the three stones I, I, I last the four. <laughs> okay, instead of 47 stones or like 58 stones, whatever he does, you know, I like mm -hmm. I think I can start with four. You know, that that four that sounds was reasonable. Little, that was, you know, like a little bit. Yes, I a little bit more reasonable, and you know, I and then I lasted half a lot, you know, like at that point, and it really wasn't too far after that that I I, I lasted the entire lot, but I was learning, you know, learning completely, learning a lot of way kind of thing, you know, you know, so, so yeah, learning, uh, so then learning how to sit and sit in a good way, which is really, you know, which is really, you know. Uh, and then you started these so, uh, shows on, so on so. Facebook to help others. <clears throat> well, you know, the you know the thing is, in you know the real the real thing is, um, I, I've been really growing, you know, exponentially in the last I don't know six years or so. It's really just taking you know my 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 recovery obviously you know my sobriety obviously is already in place there you know and uh praying with spirit and spirit's really been been focused uh helping me god is to to really kind of kind of take it to the next level type thing you know mm -hmm. take it to 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 the next spiritual level kind of take it to 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 new levels and and I heard that for a long time, but I didn't know what that looked like. So again, I had to go back to prayer to, hey, what does this look like? And, and it looks like, you know, keep on writing books and, and, you know, kind of put yourself out there as far as these teachings, you know, these, these teachings go. These teachings aren't, aren't my teachings and they're spiritual teachings, you know, they're the spirit's mm -hmm. teachings. And, you know, of course, you know, the ancestors teachings. And, and so it took me a minute to, to kind of figure it out. And it took me another minute to have to kind of do it, you know, because because uh, there was that thing about. Um, I don't know. Enough. It was like and there, there was, you know, it's one thing to post. No, well, yeah, you know, it, it's like uh, it's like, you know, whenever we step in the new new realms and this whole new media thing like what we're doing now is it look like a really brand new realm you know back then it was you know yeah. and we're only talking a couple of years ago so it's just kind of like all right you know especially with this COVID thing you know you know we can't really do a lot of ceremonies together now if they are they're smaller um but you know how else can we really bring bring people together type thing and, and so um Another funny story is, uh, so, so I said, okay, and then, uh, all right, well, let, let me do a YouTube channel and just let me kind of put that out. That's pretty simple enough, you know, so I just kind of set that all up. I'm really clumsy with technology, so it took me a minute to set that up, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, so, so I did it, and uh, the first one, the first video I did was uh, talking about the Red Road, and I kind of took notes. I, I said, "Well, I should probably do this and say that." And just, uh, and then I said, "We should really be guided." So, you know, you know, I sat there in prayer and something like that. And then, <laughs> then I started about. I started, you know, right, you know, right when I woke up, probably, I don't know, you know, uh, at six in the morning, and I had a coffee, and and then I was in front of the camera like this, 
uh, at, at about seven or seven thirty, and it, and it was like freaking like twenty seven takes later. <laughs> it was kind of like you know because I would stumble, and then I would think, well, uh, I've got let me to start, start over. You know, oh, instead no. of just kind of going through and really being to kind of really being really being guided, I'd be like, uh, you know, my name's Wayne uh, Wayne Snowgrove, and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take you. Uh, no more ums, no more, you know, <laughs> my name is Wayne William Snowgrove, Soto Tribe, uh, Fish and Labor, you know, and then, uh, and then I would jump in, oh, man, okay, I forgot this much, all right, so I mean, my name is Wayne William Snowgrove, blah, 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 let's smudge, okay, so, so then, oh, no, I forgot to pray before that, okay, so let's, so it's just kind of like, and so, so, so finally, at one point, I had a really big break, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to just go with whatever spirit wants me to go through and, and or, or uh be those really hollow bones because it, it's really because what i've been taught in, in ceremony it is it, it, to you know i feel the people you know i feel their energies and it really guided by by what they mean you know i'm really really guided it's really different to do this over you know the virtual digital world kind of thing you know are you still able to pick out, up what people are feeling way. Um, absolutely yeah i mean it took me a minute you know it took me a minute and you know to, to really to really kind of understand that in the virtual world they could be in belgium and i can still kind of feel what they're saying because in the spiritual world they're still sitting right next to me there's no time or space or distance between us you know right so energetically and so that's something that my mind has really just kind of get through so so if you're in like i don't know egypt or palestine we got got, got a couple people from there you know and once i see their names i i really feel feel that you know and then kind of allow the guidance from there flow through here to to you know get to them plus anybody who shows up is divinely guided anyway to be there anyway you know like there are no accidents type things so now it's just like you know with the morning meditations and i've really kind of got my groove now and you know got my little you know creating a little spiritual niche there you know and it's really really powerful and it's really needed you know not only for you but for me to listen to this stuff too because you're not the only one sitting in a circle i'm sitting in a circle right next to you you know and i try to say that too so what's flowing through me is for me too you know, it's for me. <laughs> I can hear this stuff, and and you know, usually just sitting in the moment. It's true. You know, usually sitting there, uh, you know, being guided. Uh, you know, like I'm sitting here alone in my room right now. I, I usually just kind of sit with a feather and, and just kind of, kind of be guided to 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 listen to what 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 what's what's got to be done next as far as the spiritual growth goes, or you know what the next ceremony looks like kind of thing you yeah know? and then it was like well everything that we read is is also for me too and you know thank you and that's your grandfather tony really kind of pointed that out and said well everything you read is for you too and i'm like you're absolutely right i can't miss completely missing you know because it, it's all about the service to the people but i'm also serving myself when i listen to you know those hollow bones so you know sitting in individual ceremonies like in our living room but we're still we're still in circle together type thing yeah you know so i've really gotten you know really just gotten those hollow bones really just gotten those hollow bones down and, and really just just what does you know, that what does that say this too, then, then, hollow you know, bones I, I still, what does that mean uh, what what is the yeah. deeper meaning of that hollow hollow bones is, is a direct message from the spirit you know oh, this okay. is what this is from the ancestors the spirit um and, and allowing myself or the elder or whoever's in charge of the ceremony to really be guided by them you know for the people you know kind of in, in uh colonial vernacular it would be like conduit kind of thing you know conduit from from that great thing up there the great source the great love the great vibe you know kind of through down here through the hollow bones to 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 the circle to the people oh, kind okay. of thing. so you know and you know it takes a minute it takes a minute to to really to really understand that and really be guided by that instead of being guided by something else too 
you know, that's when, you know, and, and again, me and grandfather had a really beautiful, beautiful conversation about that because he's well aware of everything I've been through. You know, he's probably that one guy that knows everything, you know. And, and so, uh, you know, he just said, you know, we have to be really aware of, of, of our healing, but we have to be just as aware of what is unhealed too and not let the unhealed guide us you know and you know that's what you know the, that's the kind of rub right there is just kind of you know it, it, is our healing leaving us or our wounds guiding us kind of thing you know uh -huh. yeah and so uh you know like like am i so you know we really have to so you know those really true hollow bones there's really true elders um you know, that come from a really loving, gentle place. You know, that's kind of that first thing that you know, hey, look, man, this guy's this guy's got it, or this 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 grandmother's got it, you know, hey, because they come that really, you know, loving, powerful, gentle place, you know, and say, okay, you know, and you know, I know right away if 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 a person is being guided by something else, you know. And there are times where where you know i just step out of the circle because and there's a couple of times i stopped the ceremony because they were just they were just you know it, it, it got dangerous you know it got mm -hmm. to the point of being very very dangerous you know dangerous you know, in what you know, way I, I i was in this one and and let me okay let me, well here's uh you know there was a, a beautiful young female uh, we, it was in florida southwest branches and um you know, she was leaving the ceremony and grandfather Tony uh, said, oh, okay, you can pour, you know, you can pour this round. And she started out and she said, oh my God, I hope I get this right. And I'm like, oh, what? what'd you say? <laughs> kind of like, you know, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, that's not something when we're being guided, that's not something we say. You know, no. God, I hope I get this right. You know, <laughs> I'm like, it's not you. You know, and so I said, you know, I kind of looked at her. You know, you know, you are not in charge. That's what you know. I said to myself, and I looked over Grandfather Tony. He just kind of came. Yeah, he just said it's okay. I said, oh, okay. You know, here we go. You know, and you know what she did was she kept on pouring the water on without listening to the spirit. So her ego was in charge. You know, her ego was absolutely in charge and then and then you know it, it lasted one minute and, and it was just getting to that the heat was just going like this you know and and and, and it was going going really bad really quick and you know what i stopped the ceremony myself i stopped and i've never i've never never done that before but this was just it was just spirit was screaming at me to to stop the ceremony so i told her stop i lifted up the doors i lifted up freaking all the doors and and we had two people that 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 looked like they were having some sort of heat incident kind of thing so right. like heat event you know and, and and so uh so i stopped the ceremony right there that was my altar too uh it's grandfather tony's altar but that was that that was the lot that that you know that, that that was my my home fire lot you know and uh you know we got the ice and i was minutes moments and seconds away from calling the ambulance for you know these two people and it just wasn't you know and you know again they just weren't in a good place to do this you know, that's when they're being guided by something else. When I say they're being guided by something else, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so like, have I ever been in a bad, bad, bad lot? Yes, 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 I have. You know, have, have I been in dangerous situations and sad lot? Yes, I have, been, you know, and it's really from those people that, that really don't know what they're, don't know how to be guided yet, you know, because everything, everything in the red road start with humility first you know humility first you know that's you know it doesn't humility doesn't lead us to the truth humility is the truth you know that's the difference right there you, you know so we have to become that that place of, of you can't be guided if you don't have humility you know? right because you want because you yeah. can't do it Right. So, well, because you think you're in charge. And so when she said, God, I hope I get this right. It's like, 
this is not about you at all type thing. You know, this is not about you. And said, what, what are you talking about? You know, and I looked over Grandfather Tony. So I was like, okay, let's be gentle, you know. And that was the only time I gave Grandfather Tony an earful too. It was because like, you know, you know, just, you know, this is, this is a very loving situation. We have to, you know, the, the first rule of sweat lodge, you know, is, is, you know, protect the people. You know, right, that's, right. That's the first rule. Yeah. I almost first rule. took somebody. That's the first out. prayer. That's the first prayer that goes in. You know. I almost took a person out of the lodge once because he was right next to me and he just started babbling. <clears throat> yeah, right. Then that's you know. Well, is that? You know, I, Something's I don't wrong. know the circumstances beyond that, but, but well, well, I, I, like would definitely, I, I would definitely take a look at that, you know, you know, like energetically, uh, he, you know, to, to, to sit in a good way, walk a pick, to sit in a good way, um, it, it's again, being divinely, divinely and humbly, you know, sit there in a humble way type thing. And if they're kind of doing their own thing like that, you, you know, you know, one, you know, they're doing it on purpose. They're not in your ceremony. They're bringing their ceremony in, into our ceremony. One ceremony, that's it. That's one ceremony at a time. That's all we can really handle right now. So if they're off kind of, kind of like doing their own thing, then, then, you know, you got to tell them to, hey, look, man, I, I, look, look, brother, I love you, but, you know, this is not your ceremony. This is our ceremony you know you know i had to do that with a brother um at brighton reservation a couple years ago uh you know he decided that he was going to sing uh during the whole during 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 every round i said you know that's not what we're doing what are you doing you know you're not bringing your ceremony you're not directing ceremony you're not the hollow bones here you need to just sit and listen to everybody else's prayer because this is a prayer round you i'm not asking you to sing you know, right. you know, and you didn't ask me to sing, you know, now I'm the one leading this thing. So people kind of get their own ideas about, well, this is a spiritual space. And I can do whatever I want. Well, that's really not what we're doing there. You know, right. the other thing too is, uh, you know, I, 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 I was, you know, paramedic for, for a long time. And so particularly with your situation, um, you know, maybe there's some sort of a heat event going too. And that's something I would directly ask you know, spirit too, to be guided by too. He, he was, you know, having some sort of audio hallucination type thing or, you know, just kind of having some sort of, you know, because it, it, it kind of represents, it, it, it presents like that sometimes. Yes. So then I would just kind of open up the door and kind of, kind of take a peek at him and see what's, you know, see what's going on, probably touch him a little bit. Hey, what's going on? You're okay? You know, or just call his name, uh, John or whatever his name was. You know, hey, John, what, what's going on? <laughs> you okay? You know, you with me? What's your name, John? Kind of thing. You know, when there's common, you know, meta questions, you know, what's today's date? You know, right. where are you? Kind of thing, you know, kind of see where he's at, you know, mentally kind of, you, you know, so, you know, like all these things, you know, come into play. But, you know, the big thing is really, you know, when we're in there, when we're sitting in the honor seat, you know, being those hollow bones for, for, for the people, being in service for the people, you know, we're not leaving. You know, we're in the service for, you know, the people, you know, we really have to be attuned to, you know, everyone, absolutely everyone. We have to make sure that, that you know, that they're, they're physically okay, you know, and one of those things is, especially before lodge, hey, t tell me if you have any health situation, recent heart attacks, high blood pressure, blah, 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 because people come in with a lot of stuff, you know, you know, so I just kind of put that in my little memory bank, you know, the start of every lodge and say, oh, okay, this guy's got a, okay, this guy's got, you know, some heart issues. Let me check in with him more frequently during the, during the ceremony. And hey, make sure he's okay because the protection of the people, that's the first rule right there. It's not the prayers. It's not, you know, it, 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 it's not the way the, the ceremonies run. It's not the fire. The, 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 the first rule is to is just make sure the people are, are okay. So. Yeah, I was so shocked when that oh. 
several people died in that sweat lodge that guy gave down there and I hear that all the time. Well, no, here's the thing with that. Here's you know the answer to that. He wasn't he didn't he well, first of all, he wasn't traditionally trained like like I was. You know? Right. You know, um he read it, he, he he did some reading out of like a book to know how to do this. He wasn't guy, he wasn't even in there. One thing, you know, he he he, he had no idea how to conduct a run, listen to 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 the spirits. He wasn't a hollow bone. He was doing it for for this reason right here, you yeah. know. And spirit will show you, you know, I don't have to condemn anybody for doing anything wrong. My job is not to spiritually smack you. You know, creator will do that. The spirits will 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 will, will address you in 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 the way they do. And, you know, they, they smacked him in a definite hit. You know, they took his life. They took his money. You know, you know, they took three years out of his life, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, manslaughter charges, you know, kind of, you know, right. they took three years. And you know what? He's still suffering because of that. He's still suffering because of that, you know. Sure he is. And, you know, his reputation is, is forever, forever marked for, for, you know, manslaughter charges. Right, like that, and that's something that he's got to address when he, he he crosses over the next world. You know, I don't want to answer for that. I don't right. want to answer for that. You know, but he he did it in such an arrogant, egotistical way. He, you know, he, you know, part of the part of what the elders do is they sit next to you the whole time. They're in it with you. The first thing I said here is I'm sitting here with you. You know, that's why I say that every morning. I'm sitting right next to you in the same circle. You know, I'm not up here, you know, because he brought that colonial mentality, like, well, I'm better and I don't even need to be in here, but you need to be in there kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Plus, he charged money for it, too, which is really something. A you lot know, of money. You know, and, you know, again, it's, you know, we never want to. Yeah, again, we, you know, money is, is obviously a necessity in some degree, but not in, in these realms here, you know, not in these realms. You know, not in these ceremonies kind of thing. It's kind of like we never want to mix the ceremonies together. Like if you're in one ceremony, stay in that one ceremony. That's it. Like, like uh, you know, the guy that wanted to sing all, you know, <laughs> like he wanted to do his own ceremony while, while we're having ours. I'm looking at him like, what are you doing, bro? Dude, be in our ceremony. We need you here. We love you. We need you here. I need you to listen to what your your sacred brothers and sisters are praying about that's your medicine that's your medicine i'm not going to have you sing during during the whole ceremony because you want to sing you know you know this is not your ceremony he said well i'm being guided well no you're not being guided. you know you're being guided by something <laughs> it ain't the spirits you know it ain't the spirit you know you know yeah. and you know as, as like a young elder young poorer you know like if i had a if I was 80 years old and had a you know head full of silver hair, you know, it may have not looked like that, but cause because I'm kind of younger and been doing this. I've been pouring for about 10 years now, I guess. So it's just kind of like um, you know, people think they can kind of get away with stuff and, and it's really not, you know, that's not what we do. We don't, you know, we don't tell the indigenous that's running the ceremony how to run the ceremony, you know. <laughs> And people, people like to do that a lot. People of different nations and different roads like to do that a lot, you know, mm-hmm. you know, because they want to do it their way, you know, so, so again, this is, you know, this is, a, well, they're not ceremony to do it their way, you know, their ceremony, you know, that's asking me to run to do ceremony, but they want me to do their ceremony. I don't know how to do the ceremony, but I know how to do mine, you know, right. and I have to protect, and, you know, here's, you know, here's the thing also, it is, you know, you weaken the prayer, you weaken the ceremony, you weaken the people. Yes, I've noticed that. That's why we do it. That's why, that, that's why we do it the way we do. So we don't interject. We don't interject anything else into to an indigenous ceremony, you know, you know. 
you know, interject or add me, you know, reggae music. You know, I don't care how much you like reggae music. I've had requests. I used to live in Miami. So uh, there's a lot of reggae down there. And said, uh, I said, you know, like I have a song I want to sing. So, but when I ask for a song to be sung, it's traditional traditional songs and, and it could be come from any red road too but it's got to come from there you know, that's the gotta red be road. a sweat so, song as much as i like bob marley there's no bob marley. there's no bob marley. yeah yeah and, you know you know it can't be redemption song sitting inside me you know <laughs> you know can't be a you know a redemption song or you know uh you know some christians come in and they want to sing amazing grace and, and it's simply you know as much as i appreciate that would love that that's simply not the medicine that's in that that's a part of you know the medicine altar type thing so just very gently you know very gently saying look uh look and, you know hey man you know you can sing it you know i want you to sing this song but after we leave sweat lodge and the fire is out you can sing that song all day long you know you can sing it during the wopa you know like the gratitude you know the gratitude dinner you know afterwards you can sing that song then you know you know i i'm, I'm not telling you no i'm telling you not right now kind of thing you know that's really the most gentle way you know that i could you know well, i'm really just, looking forward to seeing you know, people to you coming to shaman's camp clear from canada i'm really uh i i again i'm really excited I just, yeah i actually live in it though so i'm from canada up there but um, I lived in Miami for about 30 years, and then uh, I moved up here to Ohio, Akron. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm in Akron, but I I, I, I uh, went home a couple years ago. I spent a lot of time there, so it's just really, uh, really beautiful. So really just beautiful journey, and uh, you know, very honored to really, really be asked anywhere to do anything. Again, that's just part of, part, part of my prayer. Every morning is really, uh, creator, I will go where you want me to go, and I will do whatever you want me to do, type thing. And and that looks like a lot, you know. It really looks like a lot. It looks like a lot more than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you looks so like much for like coming a, on the show. Looks like uh, like morning run. <clears throat> thank you for coming oh, on the you show. You are so welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And I will see you tomorrow you morning so for your meditation. You so thank you for that. You're going to do another meditation in the morning. So. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Or is today the day? Did I, am. I miss Actually, it? I'm going to do a Facebook live here. Uh, well, I do the morning meditations, obviously, in, in the morning. And, That's the one I've been and, doing. And uh, I do story time. So I'm going to. When yes, is story uh, time? I'm going to do story time in about an hour. So In about um, an hour. On Facebook. And did you. Uh, yeah, my yeah, Facebook Live. Uh, my my elder Tony Stone Hawk knows hundreds of these, so and I know about forty of them. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so uh, you know, so I like just go be in the So hey. you know, I'll be going on. So I'll be going on uh in about an hour for story time. So uh, so again, Julie, thank you for you know, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very honored to. Thank you. you, and thank you, everyone, for coming. It was wonderful to have a nice big audience. I don't know how many people were here. How many people were here? Um, fourteen. Okay, we got a lot of people. Here. Okay. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh, nice. All. Okay, terrific. Mahalo. Standing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Goodbye.